Hey, the recording is on, and uh, welcome to this class, BC314 on media and technology in ministry. <clears throat> so let's pray and uh, let's get started. And um, yeah, so Kiran, can you please pray for us, the class, and then we will start. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Father God, we come before your throne, Father God. We want to just say thanking you, Father God, to the subject and to the timing, Father God. Thanking you, Father God, give your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to this subject, Father God, that we can understand and apply to your kingdom work. Thanking you, Father. Almighty Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, <clears throat> welcome to the course, um, BC314, Media and Technology in Ministry. It's our second lecture this week. Uh, yesterday, we uh, went through social media, and I just kind of gave a, a, an overview of, uh, you know, some of the ways in which uh, as a church or as a ministry, we can use social media uh, uh, and some of the things to keep in mind as we uh, use social media to engage with our audience. Um, from this point in the course, we're going to change our focus a little bit. And I'm, we're going to start talking about digital equipment. Um, so I'm going to today's class, maybe a little short class. We're going to talk about the software side uh, of things. Then from next week, we'll get into the hardware side, the equipment, the physical equipment that we will use. And, um, and my objective in, in, in talking about the digital equipment, the software and the hardware is and not that we're going to learn how to use those things, but more I'm speaking more from a perspective of a pastor or as a Christian leader or somebody who's involved in Christian ministry, that as you think about using media and technology, you, know, you will have to talk to the people who are going to do the work. That means, uh, you know, whether it's your graphic designers, your video editors, your other people who are being involved in, you, you will have to talk to them, you know. And so it's good to have some knowledge, uh, not from point of view of operating, you know, or using the software or using the hardware, but just to know that, okay, this is what is there and this is what they are talking. You know, I have something, uh, I have some understanding of the language so that you can talk to them. And sometimes, um, you know, uh, even uh, ask the right kind of questions or maybe point them in the right direction. If, uh, if you're saying, look, this is what I want to be achieved uh, in order for the ministry to take place and so on. So uh, I'm coming from that perspective, right? So it's good, even though, uh, you know, all of you are going to be in, involved in the spiritual side of ministry, that is the word of God and prayer and ministry. It's good to have some understanding of these kinds of things so that you can have uh, proper conversations, meaningful conversations, sometimes even make decisions, you know, because they'll usually come back to you on what to buy or what to, uh, you know, for your approval. So it's good to have some understanding. So we're going to talk about digital equipment. Uh, I will just cover a little bit on the software side today. It's very simple. I've listed things out just as a thing, a reference you can have. And then next week, we'll get into the equipment. You know, if we talk about the cameras, the audio equipment that you need for you know, for a PA system, the live streaming equipment, just to know that this is what actually goes in and this is how it's set up so that um, when, when, you have, when you're going to do any of these things in your ministry, you have some understanding. You know, just to, this is just from a way of story, just to give you a little background. Uh, you know, um, in 2001, uh, when we started All People's Church, uh, we were very, and th that time we were very small, we just, you know, a handful of people, were 20, you know, 20, 25 people. We decided, okay, you know, uh, why don't we use, uh, get on to television uh, and we, with cable television. That means it just covers, you know, certain parts of the city of Bangalore. It doesn't cover the whole city. It's cable television. 
and you could buy time, uh, buy some slot on it and have your program as cheap and comparatively. And um, so I remember back in 2001, we, that was the first time we started rec recording programs for television and that time it was cable television. Uh, we had no background, no understanding, no people, nothing, right? So I actually got, you know, went to another church that had, uh, they, they had, uh, of course, they had a church building and they also had uh, the setup. They had camera, they had somebody who could do the editing of the video programs. And uh, we paid them and said, you know, can you record programs for us? So that's how we started. And they didn't have us even a studio. So we used to go at four o'clock in the morning uh, to their church. Uh, because uh, at least there would be no disturbance in that hour of the day. And uh, we used to record. Uh, and they had just one camera. It would come straight there. I would stand behind the pulpit and just preach, just talk to an empty hall. They would record the program. And that then that person would edit it and you know make it look nice and then put it on cable television. So that's how we started our TV program uh, in 2001, you know, and I had zero knowledge of all this. I just knew that, uh, this would be a good way to, you know, try and get into people's homes on cable television and, uh, and, uh, you know, maybe bring the word of God to them, you know, let's see how it goes. So we started doing that. It was very difficult because four o'clock in the morning, you have to go there and record, you know, about three or four sermons, short, you know, 25 minute sermons. They would, uh, that person would edit it and take it to the cable TV and then they would put it out and you know, all those things. So anyway, it was a learning experience. Then came, uh, the next thing was, they said, look, there's something called green screen where uh, there is a studio but the studio was just a small room and they had a green screen. So basically what they said was, uh, we can replace the green screen with any other background. You know, so you, know, you, you have to make sure that you don't wear anything green in your clothing, don't have anything green. You just stand there and you speak. And then the green screen will be replaced by, you know, some fancy background that you've, some a photograph, picture, something like that. So I remember even those days, you know, we, we did green screen or, uh, you know, the, that that kind of uh, recording that we did uh, in those days. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, again, it was all a learning experience. I, I didn't know all these things. Uh, then we, uh, uh, yeah, I'm trying to look for the right word here. Anyway, so uh, we, we went through that stage where we used to do green screen recordings and, uh, uh, you know, and I was standing there. They could even put a pulpit in front of me. They could do lots of things, you know, and they did all that stuff. So we did that for some time. And, uh, and all of this was rented. Like we never owned any equipment. We never had a studio, nothing. And then something very interesting happened in 2012, you know, and by that time, slowly um, Christian programming from India and within India, you know, slowly started increasing. We had different uh, Christian TV stations come up and uh, so many of them have gone actually. Uh, many of them have disappeared from the scene today, but those days they were there. And then very interesting happened was 2012, um, and I think it was August of 2012 or something, when we received a call from God TV Asia. And in those days, God TV was pretty well known and was, was doing well. And they called us and they said, uh, you know, we would like for you, we want to have some Indian preachers on God TV because at that time it was, you know, all a lot of uh, uh, other countries, but, they didn't have any Indian pastors or preachers at, at yet. And they said, uh, you're the first person that we felt we should call. We want you, would you be interested? Now, this was a paid thing. You know, you have to buy the time. And so God TV called and, uh, you know, and we asked them, okay, what's your rate and what are your charges? And so uh, they gave us all the information and, and we were in a position to, uh, 
you know, do it. So we said, yeah. And we were actually, I think, and the first first church uh, in India to come on God TV. And then slowly other churches, you know, other churches in Bangalore and places came on God TV. Um, Asia, God TV Asia. Uh, but uh, I remember how difficult it was in those days uh, to record the program. I remember the very first set of programs we did for God TV. Uh, and and, and we, we got some help. People come help us. How do we do record this? Uh, and we actually rented a huge auditorium. Uh, that was the uh, MLR Convention Center in Whitefield. So we re rented a huge convention center. Uh, we built, physically built props on the stage and it seemed to be such a big effort just to record, you know, four programs, one per week. And we didn't have all the, you know, it was all a learning process for us. Um, but from there we moved to, you know, uh, just doing so many, you know, we just kept improving, uh, improving, learning, improving, learning, improving. And, uh, you know, until and, and we went on God TV till 2019, December 2019, and then we, we decided to discontinue and God TV programming simply because uh, uh, there was a change in engagement. That means more and more people were just you know going on YouTube uh, to watch whatever they wanted, not necessarily television. And then we said, okay, why should we spend so much money on television? We should focus on delivering content directly to people through YouTube because they're now people are watching on their phones and they're not necessarily sitting on, you know, in front of TV. So we saw that shift and then we moved from our focus on TV programming to more on uh, digital platforms like social media and other website, you know, app and all of that. But it, it's been a, you know, it was a learning experience throughout these, those years. And, um, uh, so, you know, I, who had zero background in video editing and all of these things, I had to talk to people who, you know, who are going to do this for us. I needed to learn what, understand what they are saying, uh, why they are saying it, so on. And, uh, and so what I'm trying to do uh, now, what I'm trying to do in this class is, I just share with you some some of some of the things that you will find useful uh, from a you know a digital equipment side or you know so that you can have conversation. Today I'll just go through some of the software um, that you know you need to be aware of. Uh, uh, and uh, so today what we have is we have uh, you know we have a full media team. We have people in house who do our recording, our editing and distribution of things. So uh, a lot of work. So, you know, we, we, we have the software, the hardware, the computers, uh, the some of the cameras and some of the cameras we still hire from outside. It's all those things. So over time, you know, we we've, we've, we have our own in-house team that does all this. Uh, but it's been a learning experience. So. I'll just share these things with you. You know, you may or may not use them right away, but it's good to know it so that in case uh, in the future, uh, you have to work with, you know, a video editing team or people like that. At least you have some idea what they're talking about. Now, of course, I know that, you know, maybe two years from now, things will change, change somewhat. There may be new things, new terminologies, uh, and new things that we need to learn, but uh, hopefully uh, this will be a, a, a starting point and be useful for us, right? So today's lesson I think will be pretty short. I'm just focusing on the software side. So we talked about the graphic software that you can use, the video editing software that you could use. And I was just going through these various, uh, you know, terms that people use when we are when they are talking and just uh, trying to explain what these mean uh, and you know, so that you know what they are referring to. And uh, uh, that means you, uh, you know, so motion tracking, it's, it's for you're following something that's moving 
uh, in, in in what you are recording, and you can you know, blur the face and so on. Uh, you can color grade. You can improve the color of the video, uh, the shade, and so on. You can have some special effects. You can do transitions, picture in picture. You can do chroma key, as I mentioned earlier. Um, you can also, you know, have uh, action effects, speed up, slow down effects. Um, I mentioned about rendering. That is, after you've edited it, it takes time to uh, bring it into the final video format before it can be released. And then I also mentioned about um, these uh, video editing apps that you could actually use on your phone uh, when you're just getting started. Um, just a few more things then before we close. Um, there is software that you can use for desktop publishing. So if you're going to create brochures, you're going to even create books, you know, uh, e-books, uh, you're going to create newspaper or magazine, and you're, you're trying to do something in, in, a, in a digital format, like a PDF or an EPUB or uh, any of these digital formats, uh, you could use desktop publishing software. So um, Canva or uh, InDesign are uh, uh, ones that uh, we, we work with InDesign, uh, but Canva and InDesign are some, or let's say maybe the top two desktop publishing software now. Uh, there are, of course, other things like, you know, you could use Microsoft Publisher, you could even use uh, 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 Creative Cloud Express uh, as a, a uh, as a free free version, of course, Word also can, Microsoft Word can also be used. So when you want to create brochures and magazines, you would use this, right? And we use InDesign for our work, for all the books that we create. Uh, typically, it's done in InDesign, or sometimes we just use Word straightforward. The last thing I want to just mention here today is about media presentation. So when you're in the in your in, in a church service, and some of you have used this when you were at APC, um, you know you want to present slides, you want a music video, you want to put in a video, you want to show scripture text, uh, and 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 you know it, it's difficult if you're using you know different software for doing this, uh, and so we have media presentation software for church. Uh, where all this comes together in one place so that you can present your PowerPoint slides, you can also show scripture text, you can play videos, uh, and so on, just from within one software. And so um, this is the church presentation software. The most uh, well-known or commonly used one is ProPresenter, which we also use. Uh, there are several others, and uh, the other you know, well-known one is Easy Worship, uh, which is also affordable and uh, uh, for, for churches and so on. So, um, uh, you know, it would be good uh, at some point if you wanted to use um, um, presentation software, you get a copy of Easy Worship and it helps you, you know, and just from one place you can project your PowerPoints, your play your videos, show scripture text, uh, display song lyrics, all of that from one place. Uh, so it's good to use this. Okay. So um, we'll stop here for today. I'm, I'm just sorry about the video. Um, I don't know where I lost, uh, uh, where I lost, uh, uh, where I lost you. Uh, but I hope uh, you know there's just this document and the content, and it will be useful. And then um, uh, uh, next week we'll get into talking about the equipments that we that we use uh, in media, just to make make us aware of what is there and how we can uh, you know use it. Uh, for our church and ministry. Okay, so um, let's wrap up in uh, prayer and then we will uh, dismiss. Uh, yeah, so uh, Siddharth, would you uh, be willing to close in prayer and then we'll dismiss? Yeah, dear Pastor. Lord, <clears throat> we just want to thank you for this time and giving us, Lord. Raj, we have learned a lot of things. Uh, from Pastor Ashish, Lord, we just want to pray, God, about audio editing, video editing, and a lot of things, Lord Jesus. God, we just want to pray that help us to understand more about it and help us to apply it in our life, God. As we continue our day, pray that be with us and guide us and lead us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank okay. You. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Siddharth. And thank you, everyone. Have a good afternoon and a good weekend. I'll see you all next week. Bye now.